if you are old enough, as I am, to remember 2611 Mumbai terror attacks, you will remember the burning Taj Hotel, the crying baby Moshe whose parents were shot dead, the horror unfolding at CST station where literally a massacre took place. In total, a loss of 166 innocent people, non-stop live news coverage, and a country watching in shock at her people being butchered and their nation invaded. As we mark the 15th anniversary of 2611 terror attacks by Pakistan, we also mourn the loss of life of five army men who in November 2023 in Rajori continued to fight the jihadists till their last breath. The jihadists again sent by Pakistan. So a reminder of continued horror being inflicted by our hostile neighbor. I take you back 15 years. The city of dreams, financial capital, film industry hub was being bled in agony in multiple locations on 26 November 2008. Ten lashkar taiba terrorists had hijacked a fishing boat and reached Mumbai by sea. They targeted prominent locations. All were wrecked in advance. They had the maps, they had the details. All of this was across Mumbai. At the Shivaji Terminus railway station itself, 58 people were shot dead and over 100 received serious injuries. Ajmal Kassab strapped with ammunition and holding the assault rifle. The identity was confirmed much later once he was arrested alive and interrogated. But experts soon noticed from the image that Kassab had worn the sacred red thread which members of the Hindu community usually wear on their wrist. The modus operandi was... If Kassab were to die in this suicide mission like other terrorists, the blame would be on the Hindus due to such identified symbols, not on the reality of Kassab, the lashkar e taiba recruit sent from Pakistan. But because he was captured alive, the details eventually came out. But in trying to arrest him alive after he was intercepted, Inspector Tukaram Ombale lost his life. But because of this inspector's sheer courage, the world got to know the whole chain trail of facts of Pakistan's attack that lasted for nearly 70 hours in Mumbai, eventually neutralizing most terrorists. This wasn't just about India. The terrorists had also deliberately targeted and shot dead six innocent Jews at the Chabad House, a Jewish center. The Chabad House became a symbol of shared pain between the Israelis and Indians. Orphaned baby Moshe was later taken to live in Israel. Therefore, ahead of 15th anniversary of 2611, Israel announced a decision to ban the lashkar e -Toyba. LET is anyway a globally recognized Islamist terror group designated such by Britain, Australia, India of course, and put in the consolidated sanctions list of United Nations. And now Israel basically reaffirmed its declaration of banning Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba as a terror organization. Israel had also called their 7th October attack by Hamas similar to 2611 of Mumbai. So this ban on lashkar e taiba being reaffirmed can be seen as an alignment on basic issues of terrorism. But if Pakistan continues to attack India, has anything really changed? A lot did change after Balakot's surgical strike in 2019. India showed that it will now take an assertive stand and that it has decided to drop its defensive stance here on. Reduced engagement, no more than necessary interactions. India also ensured to improve the management of coastal and maritime security, fast interceptor crafts, coastal security exercises, building infrastructure on the border and ensuring heightened manned security patrols 24-7 by our armed forces on the India-Pakistan border. And the biggest change since 2611? India is on the rise, continues to progress, focus on the good, uninterrupted democracy, and become a global economic power relevant to the world with over $3 trillion economy. Pakistan's leadership is in crisis. Military controls most political decisions. Islamists are on the streets. A nation across the world known more for their terror attacks than economic stability. So even the world today can see which nation is contributing positively toward a better world. As I conclude, India has possibly done everything over the years with continued successive governments of different political parties to possibly become friendly with Pakistan. A hand of friendship was extended from Jawaharlal Nehru 
Rajiv Gandhi, Atal Bihari Vajpayee and even Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But each time, India has been betrayed, stabbed, forced to lose important men in the armed forces and civilian life. Once an undivided India, today a fact remains. India cannot change her neighbours. But what India has learnt to do is try to keep her people safe, to ensure another 2611 does not happen, and try to also ensure that the world increasingly becomes aware, more aware, of Pakistan-sponsored jihadism. Thank you for watching.